Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd talk about quite a contentious topic, which is the use of antibiotics in the management of acne. And the idea for this video was triggered after seeing a patient last week for the first time who'd literally been on tetracycline antibiotics for four years and absolutely terrified about the notion of stopping them, but equally realizing that it's not a good thing to be on um, antibiotics long term. And I think the reality is that WHO do not want us prescribing courses of antibiotics for acne for longer than six months. But in order to get people off them, you have to put a proper strategy in place. So I thought I would talk to you today about the things that we have that are antibiotic free, that are also key to a great success in managing your acne. So when I see someone for the first time, if they have quite active inflammatory acne, so lots and lots of red spots, or red spots with white heads, nodule cysts, that sort of thing, and I think they're at risk of scarring, um, I will tend to almost always use something oral where it's suitable in that patient just because it switches off the acne um, fairly quickly and limits the amount of damage those inflamed spots are doing whilst we get to work on the root cause which are the closed comedones. Um, so that means starting a retinoid at the same time and the great thing about using retinoids is that they work on both the inflamed and the uninflamed spots. So they do so quite slowly. And that's why I think about the three month mark and the six month mark in terms of mapping out progress. And they do sometimes make you purge a bit at the beginning, but they are fundamental to getting acne under control and also for making your skin look great. So retinoids are great, and what we know is that by the time you've got 50% improvement in your acne whilst on oral antibiotics, you can pretty much stop the antibiotics because most of the hard work is going to be done there on in with the retinoid. So I would say to someone, for example, this person coming off antibiotics for the first time in four years, it's absolutely essential to put those foundations in place. And I certainly didn't stop the antibiotics there and then. This is something you have to wean someone off before they can go cold turkey. So retinoids are great. Next thing we know is that benzoyl peroxide um, is a fantastic drug to use in acne. Now, this is not just because it works brilliantly in inflamed lesions, it also has some benefit in those closed comedones or bumpy um, clogs that you'll often see along the jawline or sitting here, just little time bombs waiting to go off. And the added bonus is that they reduce the chance of you becoming um, of the, of the bacteria in acne becoming resistant to your antibiotics, both in the topical format and orally. So another great thing to have in a very complete acne regime, just because it makes it safer for everyone. So that's a benzoyl peroxide based treatment with or without topical antibiotics combined with it. Um, you've got your retinoid, um, and then you might be on oral antibiotics until things quieten down. And I think about it as putting stabilizers on your bicycle. You take the stabilizers, which are the oral antibiotics, away um, whenever you're ready to ride the bike. And that means that the skin is being conditioned properly with your use of topicals. And I think that makes for the least stressful scenario for stopping something like antibiotics by mouth that you may have been on for ages. Um, the other agent that we have, and I often think about adding that in at sort of a three to six month mark is azelaic acid, which is again a great alternative to using antibiotics. And it has activity in both the comedones, the inflammatory lesions, but also rather brilliantly in treating dark marks um, and uneven texture. So it's a fabulous agent to bring in when you've got control with your retinoid and the number of new spots is right down, you're getting very few new spots and you're into the, what I call the tidy up phase. You're just about making your complexion look fantastic. And by the time someone's on those agents, so they've got some benzoyl peroxide for the odd breakthrough new spot, they've got their azelaic acid and their retinoid going, you know you're in the right space to stop oral antibiotics um, in someone who's needed them at the beginning. So that would be the average moderately severe acne patient, but I think then looking at the final option really for avoiding the use of antibiotics is the use of Rakutane or Isotretinoin or Accutane if you're in the US. And it's probable that in some instances we are delaying using Isotretinoin longer than we should. And I think that's an important thing as a physician to be aware of. 
Um, and of course that is something that um, there is no concern with in terms of bacterial resistance. So, as you can see, lots of options for treating acne, and I think the most important part is to get good results in a safe way that doesn't compromise um, the health um, of, of humans as a whole in terms of overuse of antibiotics is a cohesive structured strategy that is designed for long-term maintenance of a tendency for acne. Um, and a, a very happy future for acne prone skin that's antibiotic free. Interested to hear your thoughts on this, I hope that was helpful.